vibration of love starts to grow stronger and stronger, you start to recognize them as yourself. Welcome, everyone, to Modern Mystics with me and my brother, Nicholas. <laughs> um, as you can see, modern technology is still catching up to modern mysticism, but I hope you enjoyed our new intro. And um, just say hi, Nicholas, so you can... Hello. Hello, everyone, again. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, it's... so me and Nicholas, uh, for anyone who's new, me and Nicholas have been high school friends. And we, we started this journey together, and now we seem to live in a spiritual community together. Nicholas is actually in Camas, Utah, and I'm in Mexico here. And um, we have a lot of miracles and parables to share with you on our journey. And I guess I just wanted to start off by talking a little bit about beliefs, because I know before this show happened, um, the Holy Spirit's helping us unwind our mind from all the beliefs in our mind, because as as Jesus says in the Course, none of the beliefs that we have in our mind are actually true because the truth is true and only the truth is true. So, so beliefs are, as Jesus says, illusions. So what happened last night is I was having a little bit of a hard time to go to sleep. And for me, I seem to have some kind of causation in my mind where it's like, okay, well, if I don't sleep as many hours as I think I need to, then the next day I'm going to be tired. And so I thought, oh, wow, well, if I don't sleep enough, then how am I going to do this show? I'm not going to feel good or anything like that. And what happened was I just realized every time I have a belief like that come into awareness, I just have to be so willing to be wrong about that belief. Because David likes to say there's no causation in the world. So really, sleep can't cause anything. Sleep can't cause a lack of happiness. So I just realized yeah, whenever something like that comes up for me, I just go into prayer and I meditate and I just tell the Holy Spirit, okay, I'm willing to be wrong. Like, show me that I'm wrong about that. And then I just really prayed that. And then now I actually don't feel tired. And I've had so many of these experiences, especially with sleep, because for me, that was one of the strong beliefs that I had in my mind. And I remember one time I was going to visit my parents in Maryland. And the night before, I, I, was, I was up until like, 2 a.m. or something and then my flight was at 4 or something so I probably only slept an hour and I really trusted because I could feel that even the seemingly lack of sleep I was getting was actually the Holy Spirit's guidance so I trusted okay Holy Spirit this is your guidance so if I follow it I have to be happy you have to show me that by following your guidance I'm going to be happy so what happened is with one hour of sleep I, I took a taxi to the airport and I really prayed and um, I was praying for miracles, basically. And when I got to the airport, I could just feel Ho Holy Spirit so clearly in my mind, just telling me where to go, who to talk to, because I had some extra time between flights. And, and it was so beautiful. Like, I felt so happy, and I only got one hour of sleep, but I was, like, radiating, and I was just having so much fun with, with all these different holy encounters. And then I, uh, I took the plane and I met up with my parents and it was so beautiful just seeing them in a completely different light. And then um, I went to a gathering at seven o'clock that night, still not tired at all. You know, you would have think maybe I would crash by then or at least from my past experiences, I would have crashed. But I was still so happy and I didn't feel even to nap or anything like that. And I was just sharing with everyone at this Course in Miracles gathering and my aunt and it was just so much fun. And I think it's really these kind of experiences, these miracles that come in to just really show us through experience that, wow, I was so wrong about all the beliefs in my mind. I was so wrong about everything that I thought was actually true. And these miracles, these shifts in perception, they help unwind our mind, ultimately back to the truth. Oh, it's beautiful. The whole... Uh... <laughs> Whole sleep thing. I I just remember times in in college when I was 
I was uh, really practicing the course at that time. And, and even I remember having like these big assignments due at the very end. And I was just, I was feeling like at the end of my college time. <laughs> and, and I remember just, I was really, you know, I was doing a workbook lesson every single day because I just felt like I wanted the experience so badly. And it, you know, it was also quite intense. So I was just like really working through it as best I could. And, and I remember having the, these big assignments that I felt like I couldn't just drop because I wanted to kind of stay in this integrity. And, and yet I wasn't really that inspired. And, and I remember they kind of waited till the last minute. And so I was up like, it was almost like this 48 hour thing of barely getting any sleep. But I just remember like taking time to pause and pray and be shown like, okay, I've heard like that uh, rest actually comes from waking. So I want this actual experience and just, it felt actually very gentle. And it was kind of the last time I had to really do that. But I just remember being shown in that whole experience, like that it's just, it just comes down to trusting and yeah, being willing to be shown and asking for an experience because yeah, I felt early on just with this journey. Um, I'm not even sure I'd really heard about the whole thing of just kind of spiritual talk groups, but I knew for myself, like I, I had had so much fear, like for quite a while, especially at the very end of my high school time, just this real dark night of the soul experience that, you know, I just felt like there's got to be a better way. And I remember even like hearing that and, and so I knew that when the course came into my life, A Course in Miracles, which has been my pathway um, for the last I guess, six years, <laughs> um, I knew that it was all going to, it's going to be about an experience. It wasn't going to be just a reading thing. I mean, I had maybe a little temptation towards that, but I wanted the experience it was pointing to, this sense of consistent peace, this sense of uh, present peace um, of you know effortless happiness of not needing to be afraid of different situations and and what I've been shown since and I feel like that's part of the theme that uh, at least that Andy and I were initially feeling for part of the show is transparency was it's kind of it's what I've seen since then is it's through kind of it's through the darkness to the light you know it's it's facing the fears as guided by the Holy Spirit or Jesus, um, you know, it's like each step is given and really our, our only job is to take each step. So even with like transparency, it's, it's like, I feel it's the same thing in, in the sense that Spirit's just asking us to be transparent with where we're at right now in this very moment, whatever is on our heart uh, and not to, yeah, and, and really not to hide it. And, and Spirit's so gentle because there is this deep fear of being directly connected with Jesus or Spirit or God, like having that direct experience. So my, ex my experience has been that, um, at least with Pathway of Course in Miracles, it's a pathway of relationships. And so the Spirit gives these given relationships to us as symbols of the Spirit, as something our mind can kind of connect with or or understand, um, like relate to. And those are the ones where we can really practice like, you know, letting go until we're, you know, and being transparent and authentic in the moment and not hiding anything because it's really, it's symbolic of not hiding something from the spirit, but we're not at least usually at the beginning ready to have that kind of direct experience. So it's more like this gentle inroads that the spirit uses until the mind is ready for like communion. <laughs> so I just, I know lately that's been a huge lesson of mine. Just, uh, I feel like an even deeper lesson because I just keep being shown, like even with willingness, with authenticity, everything. It's like, I thought I was being authentic. I thought I was being willing. It's like, you were. But it's like, it's how deep the rabbit hole goes. You, you know, you can only be as willing or aware of your mind as you are at any time. And it just keeps opening and deepening. And really it's unconscious. That's the whole journey you know, like raising consciousness as I've heard a lot shared or David Hoffmeister share a lot and uh, just raising the consciousness, which to me, yeah, literally it's like an iceberg. You got to raise that iceberg up and, and see it. In order yeah, to I, think, I think transparency is really important and um, raising that un 
conscious up to the surface because really when we have these mighty companions, like of course, Nicholas is one of my mighty companions and we practice transparency with each other. And it's like we're living and one of the guidelines is no private thoughts and, and the other one is no people pleasing. So with no private thoughts, it's like we have to be transparent with, with our brothers. And um, let's, say, let's say I'm joining with Nicholas over Skype and I feel some kind of like judgment upon him or something like that, <laughs> some kind of grievance. Then the no private thoughts is really being willing to just express it to him. And since we have the same purpose to really heal our mind, then he has that purpose out front. And he knows that when I say, Nicholas, I want to express this to you. He knows that the reason why I'm expressing this to him is so that I can then expose my unconscious and start to heal my mind. So it's like, that's already in place. So when we talk about no private thoughts, no people pleasing, you don't just kind of go to the supermarket and just start telling all your judgments to everyone that you have them on, you know, in the supermarket, they don't have any kind of context. You know, and, uh, I know, I know some people have tried that in the past. It, it doesn't go very well, but um, yeah. So going along with the, kind of a theme of relationships as well that you mentioned and, and transparency and mighty companions, it's like on this journey, um, with our desire to awaken, these mighty companions start to join us. And I think one of my first glimpses of that was when I was in high school and um, I was working at a gym. And then this one Hispanic lady started, she came in one day and started to work with us. And um, over the days, I never really talked to her about spirituality and I didn't even really talk to her about anything. But I remember one day there was this other man and he made a comment about me, like to me and, and that, caused some kind of grievance and I, I really felt like I hated him or something and he walked out of the room and the Hispanic lady was there and uh, basically I was expressing to that Hispanic lady all my thoughts and you know this is like this is like I think before the course I was reading Disappearance or something but yeah like I said we never talked about spirituality but I was just expressing all my thoughts to her because I felt like I guess in somewhere in my mind I felt like I could trust her she felt like someone that I could really trust, even though I barely knew her for some reason. So I was expressing these thoughts to her about how I felt about this man and on and on. And then I stopped and yeah, she, she said a few comments and then, and then she stopped and she looked me in the eyes and she was like, remember the source. And then she just walked away. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. And then, so I, it didn't hit me at first, but I think a couple of minutes later, I was like, wait, what, what did she just say? And I was like, whoa. So that was really an expansive experience for me. It really shows that, you know, everyone, um, yeah, with your desire to awaken, mighty companions will be sent to you. It can be in any form. If you're working at a job, it could be there. Um, but yeah, they'll just be sent to you like these angels. I just thought of her as like some kind of angel, you know, like the TV series touched by an angel. It reminded me of that. <laughs> and so, yeah. And then I think after that day she got fired or something. I never saw her again. So <laughs> that was, that was really cool. But yeah, I feel like I just love all the miracles that come in because like I said before, they're really a convincing job to show you like the power of your mind. I remember another time I was going to this meditation group and uh, for some reason I was always running a couple minutes late to that group. And this one day I was driving on the highway on, on my way to the group and I just had this thought like, okay, it looks like I'm going to be a few minutes late again. And, um, and then I just had this really expansive experience while I was on that highway of like my mind just being everywhere. And then I had this thought, well, if my mind is so powerful, I should have some kind of effect on time. You know, I kind of want to be on time. I wasn't really trying to make anything happen, but it was more of like a realization, wow, my mind's powerful. Um, I should have some kind of like effect on time. <laughs> and uh, what happened was I, I got to the meditation group and usually there's like five or six people in there at this point. Cause I was like five minutes late. You know, I expected there to be five, six people and they're all meditating and I'm kind of like coming in and like trying to like sneak over to my chair or something. It's kind of what I expected to happen. But I walk in there and no one's in there at all. Like not a single person. And I was like, okay, this is interesting. 
And uh, I just sat down and meditated for like two minutes and I was like, okay, I don't know what's going on. So I walk outside, I run into one of the participants and she was like, oh, I was looking for our instructor, um, the facilitator of the group. And I was like, okay, sounds good. Maybe we can just start meditating uh, without him. And so we just start meditating and then eventually the facilitator walks in and maybe a couple other people. And so at this point, it's cool because I actually technically was on time. You know, I was the first one there, actually. I was the first one in the group. But not only that, it was really cool because the facilitator walks in and he's like, oh, sorry, I was late. Um, I got stuck in some kind of time warp. And, I, <laughs> <laughs> and again, it was one of those experiences where it didn't hit me at first, but we started the meditation. And I was like, wait. And then I, all of a sudden, I remembered what I said in the car on the highway. And then I remembered what he just said. And I didn't even know what a time warp was. Then it kind of all started to hit me. And I had like an amazing meditation because I was in the miracle. And, and yeah, it's so beautiful. So yeah, I really think that's what's so powerful and amazing about all these miracles. They're really like convincing mind hmm. that really everything we believe is, it's not as it actually is. Hmm. Yeah. And, you know, there's just something that was coming to my mind just as I was kind of in prayer about our, our show today, just around kind of modern mystics and, and just transparency and my companions. And I feel like, you know, every, it's like, it's so individualized, everyone's path of what it's going to look like. And yet I still felt like in my mind, it's, it's not like, I don't feel like at least anymore, it's not a path of like solitude it's really a path of like, mighty companions, relationship, like brotherhood. <laughs> and yeah, I just, I mean, I've heard different people saying like, oh, but I, you know, I don't live in a community, how to do this. And, and for me, actually, you know, Andy was my first, uh, my first mighty companion, like before I even really knew the term. And because I started, you know, I started the course, or I read Disappearance the Universe by Gary Renard, uh, going into my first year of, of college, because that summer before I was like this big undoing for me, this dark night of the soul where all these things just happened to just perfect timing, like crumble me, <laughs> where, you know, my pride was too high. Like, oh, I don't need help. I'm okay. Like, I'm an atheist, science, cosmos, I'm good. And then just <clears throat> with having, with having these very humbling experiences and just kind of crumbling this pride, I just opened up to this place of like, okay, I need help. I need an, another way. And I don't want to, you know, I didn't feel like it was my path to, um, you know, take drugs or things like that to suppress, you know, antidepressants, things like that. I felt like there's got to be a better way where I don't need anything. And that's where really I felt like the course came to me through Andy actually hitting <laughs> me, this changed the universe. And then, uh, so, practicing that in my first year of, of, of university and then especially my second year during that time I was about 14 hours away bus ride from Maryland which is Maryland uh, east coast where we grew up I was in Quebec Canada for my university uh, for those two years that I went and during that time especially that second year I think we were having at least one Skype call a day if not like Skype chatting all the time because I was just having all these insights and I just I wanted to feel so joined with you, Andy. And so we were just connecting all the time for all these months, you know, 14 hours apart. It doesn't really matter at that point, but it was like technology. It's like, it's coming now, not by coincidence. It's like, it's coming now because the mind is ready to, to join, to connect, just like this Zoom technology right here, these joinings each Sunday or these online retreats that now we're doing these monthly ones. You know, it's, it's no coincidence. <laughs> you're, you're, I forget how the quote goes exactly, but your place, your, you know, time, your, what? Passage. <laughs> your passage through time and space is not at random. Even having the tech support tell me that right now. <laughs> not at random. <laughs> Some of them. <laughs> no, I just feel like, yeah, it's, if there's a desire to join, like it'll show up. Like when I was finally ready, even, even with Andy, there was a certain point where, like the course got very deep for me after my six months immersion of it in university. Um, yeah, I was entering my second semester, my second year. And, and that's when 
I had a long distance girlfriend at the time uh, who's in France and, and it was right at that time. I, I remember around Christmas time, it was right around her birthday. And I was, you know, I was reading two pages of text every day and, and one lesson. And I got to uh, chapter 16 uh, in the section, the illusion and the reality of love. And I was like, oh, this looks interesting. <laughs> so I, I decided, uh, I read it and it, I was just, something about it so inspired me and yet so crushed me <laughs> just because I realized by reading that I've been having this like illusion. Like I've had all these thoughts and fantasies. Oh, I, I've got this five-year plan. I'll get married with her in five years. I'll get rich in between. And, you know, all these thoughts. You know, me and Andy had this business plan. It's it all, I had all these friends. <laughs> and <laughs> it's pretty funny now, but <laughs> um, yeah. And so I was just reading through that. And then it, I, I felt like intuitively I heard, but I was kind of done denying it. But I knew quite soon after that we were going to break up. And it wasn't, I think it was maybe two weeks later where all of a sudden I received this uh, Facebook chat saying like, we need to talk. And immediately I was like, oh, not, the, not those words. I know those words. And it was just the spacing of it. But it was perfect because for me, in my spiritual path, I've come to see whether I I like it or not in the moment, every time a relationship seems to end, it's always been this like catalyst for me because it's just, oh, okay, like I can't rely on that anymore. And it just like dives me deeper into like, I need you, God, like <laughs> I need you. Like I, you know, I know there's gotta be a better way. And it's always been this helpful thing where it just, it gets used. And at that time for me, it was, yeah, I think it was like a few days after I had like a panic attack, which I hadn't had for a while. And I Skyped Andy at midnight, you know, so it doesn't even matter where your, your mighty companions are. It's like, if it's given, they'll be there. And I Skyped him and he basically just walked me through my panic attack at that time. Cause I just, I was spinning in my mind and it was like for three hours and I went to sleep with him, like on my computer right there near my bed. And he just walked me through and I was so grateful for it. And I was like, so touched by it and you know that was just showing me like we can trust the ones that are given to us like they'll be there like the ones we need and if they're, if they're not if for some reason they're not that means we're ready to to face whatever it is in that moment and it was at that time but then it just started really opening up uh because i think two weeks later is i was watching i'd heard about david again andy shared the first video with me <laughs> it was like he's been like this angel that keeps like was opening up doors for me. And uh, so David Hoffmeister, uh, yeah, I was watching videos of him and at that time it was just deepening. I kept watching him and like Andy said, like almost eight hours a day at certain times. And, and I just hit this really deep place. Like again, that relationship entered me into like uh, the ending of it, into this dark night of the soul. And that's when I just happened to be guided to find David's email address. So I don't even remember where I looked. I feel like it's so easy to like, find locations now and um, all this information now but at the time my mind was kind of blurry and that's when I decided to write this email with him which was this real kind of transparent thing I felt very vulnerable writing to someone I never met but I felt this deep trust with um, and somehow I just felt like I had this deep prayer like I don't know if I can go another day like with this despair I'm going through like, this is so deep and I don't hear anyone else talking about you know through the darkness to the light except this guy, David Hoffmeister. And I, so I just felt this trust with him. So I wrote this email to him saying I was in Quebec, Canada, college, all that. And, and I, I went to sleep just with his prayer, like, okay, reach me. You know, I need help here. I'm like really scared. And, and I, I woke up and I saw the first thing on my phone was an email reply from David. And I was astounded because first of all, I didn't even know if people would respond. You know, I had no experience of this. And just it was this loving message of, like I'm with you and there's mighty companions with you and all this. And that's what really opened me up from there. It's like Facebook groups came in, uh, prayer and support, which I, I felt like I really needed at that time. And just all these things. And then even the spiritual community and it just, it just opened up as my desire to, to deepen and to really go for God and to really allow myself to fall apart, you know, to come into a real experience of who I am, you know, as that became really more solid in my mind. It's just opened up and opened up and opened up. So I just, yeah, there's something that felt really inspiring about my companions and being willing to be transparent. Like Andy and I have on our calls. Like, 
yeah, yeah. <laughs> no examples are coming to me. But that's just how our calls have felt lately, just even this deeper level of that we weren't even ready for at the beginning. You know, I remember like holding back certain thoughts. Like, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. all the all the mighty companions we have they are our relationships. So when we say relationships, it's, it doesn't have to be like girlfriend, boyfriend kind of thing. And uh, we only have a few minutes left. So I just wanted to share a little bit about relationships because we're actually having an online retreat about relationships with David Hoffmeister, which Nicholas has been talking a lot about, which probably all of you know, and um, so, some of his other mystic friends and elders. And um, it's going to be next, uh, actually this Friday, right? Yeah, this Friday. <laughs> Six April sixth to eighth <laughs> retreat on relationships. So yeah, just a little about relationships. I just know for me, like I also had a relationship at the time during high school that went on for like a year or two, and I really thought like that relationship was an end for me. You know, like that is love, and that's it. Like that's the end. And then I think at some point while I was practicing the course, and before I went to my first retreat. I had this realization that actually I don't know what love is. Like I just had that realization one day. And then what happened was I was really giving my full yes to the Holy Spirit and being guided to all these different places at the time, but really with that in mind that I didn't know what love was. And so I went to my first retreat, which was a silent retreat at the Living Miracles Monastery. And I really wanted to give it everything I got. And it was like a six day silent retreat. And having that in mind, not knowing what love is, I remember it was like two or three days into the silent retreat, all this darkness felt like it was building up in my mind and I had like this huge headache and um, we were having this healing touch session that night where I really didn't want to go because I was like, oh, healing touch, I don't, I don't really, I'm not really into that. But I, I really felt the guidance to go there. So I actually went and what happened was I just, you sit in the chair and someone is seemingly giving you love and you're receiving love from them and then you switch places with the group and so my eyes were closed and I, the whole time I was in deep prayer like please Holy Spirit like help me with release this darkness in my mind help me release this darkness and I just prayed 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 so hard and the person behind me was just so passionate with like uh, the shoulder massage or whatever was happening and then the music was uh you can relax now you can relax now like everything's okay by Shane and Noel and uh all of a sudden I just felt like I felt like this release and I saw this vision and it was like, it was me as the son of God in heaven. And I was just lying down and my eyes were closed and God was just whispering in my ear, like you can relax now. Wow. And then all of a sudden I felt, I felt, I started crying so much and the huge release from my forehead and the headache went away, the, the seeming sickness that was coming went away, everything went away. And I just felt something that was so indescribable that I had no idea what it was, but I felt the happiest I had ever felt in my entire life. And I remember I stood up and I shared to the whole group. I was like, wow, my entire life until this moment, I feel like I've been dead until now, until this moment. And I felt alive for the first time in my entire life. And I felt like I had been a zombie up until that <laughs> moment. And that was probably the only, <laughs> that experience was the only thing I could say was, came close to what love is that just felt like I got a glimpse of it that day. So I just wanted to share that really, we don't even know what love is. Like we actually don't know anything really. And yeah. <laughs> I was having the same thought last night and this morning. So I join you. So, so yeah, we really have to wrap it up now, but <laughs> in three weeks, yeah, in three weeks on Sunday, we have a Facebook event page, modern mystics search it up and, Thank you guys so much for joining us today. And I love all of you. And thank you, Nicholas. Oh, I love you too. I love you, Andy. And I love you all. <laughs>